favorite television from whenever I was a child. And it's an RG4248 WA01, or the D, October 1986. It's having a few issues and it might need repaired. So you can probably imagine why I would keep this television when I found it for free behind an old television repair shop that they normally piled up televisions that people could just take. And Well, they cut the cords off, but, some, but most of them still work. They were just obsolete and nobody wanted them, so they were free. This one was made in August 1984. I'll have to get the part number off of it. But let's see if it even works and if it's even worth putting in my workshop. With that particular television repair shop, them cutting the cord didn't mean that it necessarily didn't work. It was more of just to negate liability. Now I have a request for you guys. I wish that some of you guys would just send me some cables that have a plug and just a section of cord on it. I don't care if it's from a fan or from a VCR or whatever you find in the trash. But I feel bad continually killing these darn cables. Because now I'm running out of these cables too. So if one of you guys has a bunch of these just power cables that I can use on stuff, that would be great. You got power and no sparks. You know, I actually have two remotes for this, so if I ever do get this television working, I'll have a remote for it. Nope. It is well and truly dead. I have just been having CRT projects like crazy and I'm not sure why all of a sudden I'm getting into CRT repairs but this is a good time to do it. I, I brought my old television up here and it still works fine, has a some color issue so I took it apart and have some new capacitors coming in but most of the capacitors are still good and any of those ones that are still slightly good can go into that one. You can obviously tell how similar they are the idea being that if that television ever burns out, the tube from this one or some parts might be movable to my very nostalgic television. I think this television is just worth another look at maybe why it's not working. And I'm not going to work on fixing it today, but I'm just taking a look at it. Now that I know it's not going to blow up, it's okay to bring it to the workshop. This is chassis. Oh. Chassis 19C201, and then this one 19C7018.
obviously different circuitry, but um, nothing seems really bad. It has more settings than my other television. Cool. This might be good for somebody's vintage gaming setup if it works. 116 volts. Makes sense. 120 volts. It is getting through that. Okay, so we have AC coming over to here through these wires. And so I'd imagine this would have a little tiny power supply in it just to keep the, uh, the buttons powered. So when you press the power button, it turns on. This TV was out in the rain and uh, the chips look bad. One of the transformers really rusty. Let's see if we're getting power to the button. 1.7 volts. And it doesn't look like it's going very well. Ooh, that's a bad idea. Good thing I unplugged it. Good thing I unplugged it. So the button's good. Kind of checking this from both ends, you know. Oh, it works. Okay. I unplugged it. Because I smell ozone. So what I heard was a sound. It was like a sparky sound. I didn't want to let it go too long. It could be so something is actually shorting out. I might want to get a fire extinguisher before I do much more with this. And But, but now I do know that it was the button that was bad. Something to do with it up there. Um, nothing over here. Well, a little bit over there, but I could have fit. I could have moved. It's kind of coming from this area. Is that ozone smell? I have two other projects where the TV is going on right now. The other TV and that old Tandy monitor. So I'm gonna put this back together. I'll give you guys an opinion on this. And we can think about how will we approach testing this television later? Because it's probably only one or two components away from being a nice, wonderful gaming television for old consoles. But it's just a matter of finding out what's the problem. And uh, I have the tendency to think that it might be good just to plug it in and see what burns up and then we replace that. But um don't know why that that simple. Before we wrap this up though, I do want to see did we make any flyback power? Plus it's not a bad idea to go ahead and discharge the tube. heard no spark. So I believe that this sound was not the flyback trying to start anything. I believe we might have an actual arcing issue.
we go. Ready for another day. This thing still kind of scares me a little bit. It's probably going to release some magic blue smoke. But I would like to hear what you guys. I would like to hear what you guys think. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And thank you very much for watching. See ya. I like all the settings it has. They're nice compared to mine. But it's that burning smell. That's the issue.